hello everyone welcome back to my channel so in this video we'll discuss an important topic called as formwork so formwork is also called as shuttering we will see what is formwork what are the different types of formworks we have also we will see the advantages and disadvantages of of those formworks and then uh, we will see what is stripping and what is stripping time etc okay if you want the notes of this video please click on the description of this video you'll get a link click on the link and download the notes so coming to the term formwork so formwork is nothing but a temporary or a permanent mold it's like a mold shape okay so into this mold we pour the concrete so once you ensure that the concrete has hardened the concrete has set then you remove the formwork okay so uh, formwork could be either a temporary mold or a permanent mold so into which concrete is poured till it gets the sufficient strength okay so this formwork will not only give the shape to the concrete but also the uh, support it acts like a support till the concrete sets and this formwork can be made up of various materials like timber plywood steel etc on which the classification goes on and uh, we you can see this formwork for uh, you know for beams you observe for columns for slab everywhere you see this formwork okay uh, always remember uh, the cost of the formwork whatever we are purchasing for our construction will be around 20 to 25 percent of the total cost of the structure but in case of bridges it may be more also so these are the different kinds of formwork you can see for columns for slabs for beams for staircases like that and if you are using the formwork for a slab you call it a slab formwork if you are using for beam you call it beam formwork if you use it for column column formwork like that based on the purpose you are using you give the name to that formwork okay once you ensure that the concrete has set the concrete has uh, gained strength such that it can withstand on its own then we remove the formwork so the uh, operation or the process of removing the formwork is called as stripping okay and the time taken to do the stripping is called as stripping time okay and if the uh, elements of the formwork or if the parts of the formwork or the components of the formwork are reused for other parts of the construction then you call it as panel form okay what are the basic requirements of a good formwork first one a formwork should be strong enough to withstand all types of dead and live loads so when you are pouring concrete into the formwork so it is like a dead load and live load the vibration loads or the people moving around it or the people applying the load whatever whatever kind of dead load or live load the formwork should be able to take it it should be strong enough to withstand that load next second point it should be rigidly constructed and efficiently propped and braced both horizontally and vertically to retain its shape shape is very important in case of a formwork why because most of the formworks are reusable so we open the formwork uh, and after again when you are uh, using it again we try to bolt it or we try to finish it so when you do not do it properly what will happen is the shape of the formwork will be uh, deviated so it should be rigid enough and if it if you are using for example formwork for a column you should uh, you know uh, put it inside the ground means you should uh, place the column formwork very uh, rigidly okay for a beam horizontally like that next the joints in the formwork should be tight against leakage of cement ground so in uh, for the formwork say uh, if it is a formwork for a column we we attach four panels together so the joints should be properly sealed the joint should be properly tightened with the bolts otherwise what will happen since it's a fresh concrete uh, the cement paste can leak through the gaps next construction of formwork should permit removal of various parts in a desired sequence without damage to the concrete so when we are doing the stripping operations uh, the formwork should give us an opportunity to remove easily it should not stick to the concrete surface and once when you are removing one element if the other element disturbs the concrete gets damaged so such thing should not be happening next the material of the formwork should be cheap readily available and should be suitable for reuse so whatever kind of formwork you are choosing it should be cheap enough to i mean you can buy it easily so that your cost of construction would not go high 
and readily available materials is good preference always and you can re you should you able to reuse it like panels the formwork should be set accurately to the desired line and level should have a plane surface either for beams or for columns whatever see that the surface is leveled otherwise if there are any ups and downs in the formwork surface obviously the concrete also would take the same shape it should be light as light as light as possible means it can be it should be able to be carried easily wherever you go next the material of the formwork should not warp or get distorted when exposed to elements so uh, when you are doing formwork or when you are pouring concrete in hot weather conditions your formwork should not be able to uh, change its shape under uh, i mean under various climatic conditions or temperature conditions because the concrete shape also would change it should rest on a firm base see that the base of your uh, formwork is always strong enough coming to the types of the formwork we have the six types we have timber formwork plywood steel aluminium plastic and fabric we'll see one by one in detail along with advantages and disadvantages first is timber formwork so it's a most commonly used kind of formwork where we use wood or timber uh, as the panels to make the formwork uh, but the disadvantage of using uh, this wooden formwork is that the chances of warping the chances of swelling the chances of shrinkage are very much possible why because formwork always uh, deals with concrete so presence of water in the concrete and uh, you know climatic conditions may affect the wooden formwork very easily okay but advantages are like it is easily available you can buy buy it at a low cost like that uh, next so you can see this is the example of a wooden formwork or timber formwork so if you want to use timber as a uh, or if you want to use formwork made up of timber you have to consider the following things in your mind you should see that the timber is well seasoned timber and the timber is light in weight and is also it is easily workable with nails without splitting means to join the panels together we will punch the nails right so at that time the wood should not split and should be free from knots i mean the defect in the timber and timber which is used mainly for shuttering purposes for exposed concrete should have smooth and even surface on all the faces because if when you are doing a concrete pavement or a concrete slab when you put the formwork when you remove it the concrete should not adhere to the surface of the timber because the once it happens the face of the concrete will not be smooth enough so you do the oiling purpose that's the reason you lubricate it so advantages of timber formwork easily available uh, formwork material can be made to desired shape so you can mold your timber formwork into any shape you can want any size you want it can be easily carried it's uh, economically very e uh, cheap and easily available and you can do it for small small works as we have discussed disadvantages you can't use it for a longer time means years together you can't use it gets decayed and also i told you when this timber uh, gets in contact with either high temperatures or moisture contents it shape deforms it weakens uh, causing the chances of shrinking and warping next comes plywood formwork so we use plywood sheets attached to timber frame so timber itself we are just strengthening it by adding plywood sheets to it to make the panels uh, these panels are later joined together to form the formwork okay Uh, obviously the cost of plywood formwork would be little bit more when compared to the wooden formwork but sometimes uh, when you observe it on a broader scale it is less okay and <clears throat> let's have the following requirements in our mind when we are using a plywood formwork it is possible to have smooth finish in which case on uh, in which case on cost is in surface finishing is there see that your plywood sheets are smooth enough by use of large size panels it is possible to effect saving in the labor cost of fixing and dismantling so when you are using bigger size panels uh, uh, easily you can uh, i mean i mean to say uh, easily you can you can uh, fix and easily you can remove the dismantling uh, dismantling and the uh, fixing is very easy and number of reuses are more uh, for this plywood uh, formwork when compared to the number one okay sometimes nearly 20 to 25 so this is how a ply plywood uh, formwork look like you can see you can have the timber frames here these are the timber frames and here you can see the red color plywood sheet attached to it advantages you can cut the plywood into any shape plywood is strong enough durable enough 
it it will provide a very smooth finish to the concrete surface you can observe here right so once concrete is poured into this you get a very smooth finishing and um, the cost of construction is reduced you can go uh, you know perform the formwork action very easily concreting can be done very easily even you can use curved formworks also making uh, by using this plywood you can make uh, curved formworks also number of reuses are more but coming to the disadvantages i already told you when compared to timber it's a little bit costly and uh, if the plywood sheets are very thin uh, due to the weight of the concrete they cannot sustain longer next comes steel formwork uh, this consists of steel plates okay the panels are made up of thin steel plates okay uh, then these uh, panel units the steel panel units are held together through the use of suitable clamps or bolts and nuts so here earlier cases we have seen timber and then we have seen plywood which contained plywood sheets now comes steel plates so steel plates they are clamped together with the help of clamps or nuts or bolts once the concreting is finish finished then again with the help of the bolts you remove the steel panels and again you can fabricate it later so you can fabricate uh, the form work using steel panels in any shape you want in any size you want in any form you want okay and these are mostly used in large projects or in the situation where large number of reuses of the shuttering is possible so where you want to do the more uh, i mean where there is a chance of uh, more usage of form work more construction if it is a large project you can use the steel forms and it is mostly suitable for circular and curved structures also so you can see here okay so they are bolted properly and these are your steel panels coming to the advantages obviously it is very strong it is able to take more load it can be fixed easily it it will give you a uniform size and surface you can use it for many number of times many years ago many years also coming to the disadvantages limited sizes excessive loss of heat can happen from the concrete and um, even uh, sometimes a very smooth surface can give us few problems next but why is uh, mostly steel formwork used nowadays and let's see what's the comparison of steel formwork with a timber formwork as we have discussed coming to the strength point of view durability point of view uh, steel formwork is very much advantageous when compared to the Tim, uh, timber it is very strong its lifetime is also more and you can install i mean you can fabricate and you can dismantle the steel forms very easily there is a no chance that when we are doing the bolting on when we are doing any clamping steel form will damage there is nothing like that but it happens in timber form work okay and um, you get uh, relatively smooth surfaces when compared to the timber form works okay and one more important thing is that um, steel formwork does not absorb any moisture from the concrete whereas your timber formwork will do and also when as timber formwork will shrink and warp your steel formwork doesn't next comes uh, another classification of formwork which is aluminum formwork so we use prefabricated aluminum sheets okay it is most widely used because of its lightweight structure and it gives a good strength it is supported with the help of supports and ties this is a aluminum formwork advantages it is easy to fix easy to fabricate and easy to dismantle also since it's light in weight handling is very easy you can reuse it for many number of times mostly you can use it for walls and slabs and you can cast it simultaneously and uh, even monolithic crack free structures can be built using aluminum formwork in a sense if slab and uh, wall at a time they can be casted when you can use a aluminum formwork but coming to the disadvantages when the load reaches its maximum limit the lighter sections may deflect so lighter sections of the aluminum may deflect when you are giving heavy concrete into it and any architectural modifications you want to do it is not possible next comes plastic formwork so another type of formwork where we are using uh, plastic I, I mean the framework is completely made up of plastic you use it for very small concreting structures of course it is light in weight and it's durable for longer periods uh, but uh, for any bigger constructions made up of concrete we use glass reinforced plastics okay. and even sometimes vacuum formed plastics 
yeah this is a plastic fabric so advantages uh, it is light in weight and can be handled easily uh, it can be used for complex shape structures also it is good resistant against water as we all know uh, the damaged plastic sheets can be recycled again you can recycle the plastic and reuse it uh, and it has greater reusability as I was talking but coming to the disadvantages it's weak against heating uh, it is a little bit costly and it does not take much load okay plastic fails easily next comes fabric form work so it's the modern technology modern kind of form work what nowadays used in the construction sector you can use the fabric with the help of the fabric you can mold or you can shape your mold into different sizes required size required shape whatever shape you want to do you can do it with the help of this fabric form work so like this so now coming to the different kinds of loads on formwork what type of loads generally we expect to fall on a formwork of course live load due to the labor who is pouring the concrete next dead weight of the concrete hydrostatic pressure of the fluid concrete acting against the vertical or inclined face of the form so uh, this concrete also will exert a pressure on the uh, face of the formwork right so that pressure next Act due to pouring concrete means when you are pouring concrete into the formwork the force acting next if you are vibrating once you pour the concrete you vibrate it so the vibrational load coming during due to the vibrator and also erection stresses due to mobile equipment if you are inserting the formwork uh, I mean after pouring the concrete if you are pouring concrete right from a chute or from any other setup that equipment also will give you stress and last uh, coming to the procedure when you are removing the formwork so with all these steps we uh, till here whatever we have seen is the different kinds of formwork so we are done with the concrete pouring now the concrete is set so we have considered what are the loads coming on the formwork now we will see what should how is we are removing the formwork so which call it as de-shattering or stripping so we follow some particular order or a particular sequence to remove the formwork. First one is um, shuttering forming the vertical surfaces of walls, beams and column sides should be removed first as they bear no load. So first try to remove the vertical faces of the structure. Okay, especially for beams, columns and walls see that the sides, the vertical sides or the faces are removed first not the top and the bottom. Next shuttering forming soffit of slab should be removed next once you remove the side faces or the vertical faces of the columns or slabs then you remove the uh, shuttering which you gave the support to the slab remove that then shutter forming soffits of beams girders and or other heavily loaded shuttering should be removed in the end so whatever the main uh, formwork which is given to the support for the, on the top side or on the bottom side then it should be removed later okay when you are removing the formwork keep in mind that there is no shock or observation uh, sorry vibration uh, as that would damage the reinforced concrete so since it is a very freshly set concrete see that you remove the formwork slowly before the soffit and struts are removed the concrete surface shall be washed out where necessary so as to determine that the concrete has sufficient strength and hardened so always see that before deshuttering your concrete has sufficiently set it has become hardened it has gained strength that's why you are removing the formwork so this is all about formwork hope you understood the video thanks for watching